Well, first of all, congrats to those who are now in the beta program. Yesterday was completely insane. We crashed the site multiple times. Regardless of being in it or not, this video is for those who are interested in all the new features and changes in Procreate 5 public beta. Now, the majority of them I already covered in previous videos, beta 1 and 2, so if you'd like to see a more in-depth review of the main features, check out the link in the description down below. So yeah, in other words, this public beta version is technically private beta 3, if that makes sense, and they finally included Harmony in this one. We had our speculations how it's going to look like, but this right here is the design, for now, since they could always change it before the official release, and here's what it does. If you're already familiar with color harmonies, this feature will make a lot of sense as it basically simplifies choosing between different color chords. So we have complementary, split complementary, analogous, triadic, and tetradic. Colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel are considered to be complementary colors. So as you can see, if I pick red, the second cursor is automatically going to move to green since that's the opposite color. So if you want to have a high contrasting look, you should consider enabling this mode. A variation of that is split complementary, which in addition to the base color, in this case the red, uses two colors adjacent to its complement, and that would be more bluish and yellowish. It's definitely still contrasty, but not as much as complementary. Now the third one is analogous, and the analogous color scheme chooses colors that are next to each other. They often match well and are very pleasing to the eye as they often resemble colors found in nature, but you should still make sure to have enough contrast between the colors. Triadic color schemes use colors that are evenly spaced and ultimately form this triangle, hence the name, and they tend to be quite vibrant. I'd also like to call it the Sharingan. Now lastly we have Tetradic, and this color scheme uses four colors that are evenly spaced around the color wheel and they are arranged into two complementary pairs, so you have that nice square which is again great for vibrance. Now with all that being said, is this feature really necessary? To me, absolutely, I know for a fact that this is going to allow me to spend less time thinking about color schemes and choosing between different color palettes, which honestly saves me a ton of time, so it's a great feature to have. So what else is new? We have new icons in the brush library, settings page, and also brush studio, most notably the calligraphy section, which I appreciate. You can now also set the preview size inside the brush studio. There are new rendering modes, light, uniform, intense, and heavy glaze, as well as uniform and intense blending. Canvas properties are now finally working properly. Before that, we had a bunch of issues. New animation assist UI, well not completely new, but slight changes. We have this new bar that indicates each frame and we also have individual frame settings. So if I increase the duration, you can see down here how the frame extends. I'm not an animator, but this definitely makes animation a lot more appealing for newbies like myself. A major change though in my opinion, all the blend modes are now in this new list view. I'm not sure how I feel about this change yet. So far every single change has been positive, but I feel like I kind of miss the old UI for blend modes. And then of course, very important, new brushes. In the calligraphy section, artistic section, inking, sketching, and of course the main exclusive ones for Procreate 5. If you're a brush maker, I can only recommend you check out the ones that are made by the Procreate team because you can learn a lot from them. The color wheel is ever so slightly bigger and also features a history bar with the most recent colors. And I think that's it for now, of course, besides the main features. Lastly, a few more words on Brush Studio. I said it before, but I make an entire separate video covering only Brush Studio in which I'll show you exactly how to make a basic iPad lettering brush, similar to the one I've done a few months ago, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that one. But yeah, all I can say for now is the future of Procreate brushes is definitely looking very bright and I'm already looking forward to see what kind of brushes people are going to make. I'll be posting more features on Instagram once I find new ones. By the way, thank you so much for 30,000. I appreciate you and I guess this makes for a great birthday present. But for now, this has been it. Again, feel free to check out my other videos related to Procreate 5 and let me know in the comments which feature you're most excited for. Alright, thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.